God wants the whole world to learn about his son, Jesus. Unfortunately, there are many different countries in the world, and many people have never heard of Jesus or what he did for them on the cross. In this lesson, you will learn how God wants to use your specific gifts and talents for his church all around the world. You'll also hear from missionaries and others who are busy about sharing the good news of Jesus. Throughout the lesson today, you will see pictures of suitcases. Each time you see a suitcase, think about what you have, a talent or a gift that you have that God has given you that you can use for the kingdom. What's in your suitcase? Good morning, everyone. Are you ready for another Sunday of Adventure and Discovery? We're continuing to learn together about becoming global Christians. That really just means we're learning about God's great big plan to save the whole world and how we fit into it. Now, if you'll remember, two weeks ago, we talked about thumbs. That was a little acronym that helped us to remember to pray for people around the world who don't know Jesus yet. There's still a big job to do, right? Let's look at a map that helps us understand that. There are a lot of people around the world who need to hear about Jesus. This map helps show different religious beliefs that are predominant in that area of the world. The blue shows countries where there are a lot of Protestant Christians who believe in the Bible, but that doesn't mean that everyone does. There are still people there who need to hear about Jesus, and the purple ones show us where there are a lot of Catholics. Some of them are very confused about uh, having uh, how to get saved or to have a relationship with him. Do you remember in our first lesson we talked about thumbs, T-H-U-M-B, to help us pray for people around the world who needed to hear about God? T stood for tribal religions. That's gray places in areas like Africa and over here that uh, where there are people who believe mostly in spirits. H stood for Hindus. That's pink on here. U stood for unreligious people. There are a lot of those in Europe and also over here in the United States. Then M stood for Muslims. A lot of Muslim countries here represented by the green. They need to hear about Jesus. And B stands for Buddhists. The orange countries here are predominantly Buddhist in their religion. So as you can see, there's still a lot of work to be done around the world. I want to keep praying for people who don't know Jesus yet. That's one way we can help with this great big job of telling the whole world. Last week, we talked about our feet. Do you have beautiful feet? Remember, we asked about that. It's beautiful when our feet take us places to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection with other people. We want to keep sharing it until everyone hears and knows Jesus as their savior. Today, I brought my suitcase with me. You can hardly travel without a suitcase, right? What do you pack when you go on a trip? Toothbrush? your socks, another set of clothes, maybe some books or toys or snacks to take along for the trip, right? The suitcase is something you take with you. It's kind of part of you, stuff that you need for your journey. Today, we're gonna to talk about what's in our suitcase as a Christian. What do we have right with us that we could use to help in this process of telling others about God? Today, we would like to unpack three ways that we can all serve in God's church. All of them start with a T to help us remember. The first one is time. This week, there were some boys who were going around campus using their time to help other people. They offered to haul my stinky trash to the dumpster. Wasn't that nice? They were using their time to serve Jesus. Another way we can serve others is by using our talents. Talents are special gifts given from God, and we should use them to serve his church and serve others. This week, watch in the lesson. See who you see using their talents. There will be people up front singing, but you might. there might be people who you don't see using their talent. 
For instance, Miss Lauren will be playing the piano. You won't see her, but she's using an amazing talent that God has given her to serve others. The third way we can serve is with our treasure. Think about the little boy who gave Jesus his lunch. Jesus took that treasure. Oh, it wasn't anything real big. Five loaves of bread, they were small, and two little fishes. But they meant a lot to the boy because he knew he was going to be hungry. But Jesus took that treasure and served 5,000 people with it. That's pretty amazing. What do you think is a way that you could use your time, talent, or treasure? Hmm, think about it. Why don't you turn to somebody near you and tell them about a way you could serve using time, talent, or treasure? Thanks for sharing. It's time to start our lesson. So everybody stand up, stretch out those arms, and get ready to sing. Good morning, kids. Are you ready to sing? It's a great day. Dick Diggory? Diggory! What on earth? 
On the street, I have fun. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh sorry. Tiggery was. Uh, I didn't realize somebody was listening. Yes, was that the uh, the Hallelujah chorus? Oh, you recognized it. Uh, well, sort of, yes. It did sound kind of like that. Mm. Just, just set me next to your cabinet because they call me Handle. <laughs> oh, oh, Diggory. Oh, no. Well, why, why the sudden uh, singing aspirations? Well, you know that new dog down there, down the street? Yes, Diggory. Why is it always about the new dog? Well, he was singing yesterday and oh my, what a voice. Yes, well, I mean, that's great. He has a talent for singing. That's wonderful. Well, he's a dog. I'm a dog. So why can't I sing? So you thought you'd start with the Hallelujah Chorus. Hmm. Well, Diggory, you know that we don't all have the same talents? Are you trying to say something about my singing? No, I mean, if you want to sing, that's fine, but you don't have to be the one up front singing. You don't have to do a concert. That's not what makes you valuable or important. Well, if, if I can't sing, then... Where does well, that leave me? Diggory, that may not be your gift to share with others. You have other gifts. Why? Like what? Just the last week you told me you've found lots and lots of bones. And you've shared those with other people. It's made them happy. But that's not in a spotlight. Oh, Diggory, that doesn't matter. Just because it's something simple doesn't mean that it's not important. We each have our own unique gifts and talents. And the fact is, in God's kingdom, in his church, he wants us just to use those to serve others. Many times, it's the simple things that are most important. The dog down the street would have a hard time singing very long if he didn't have a good bone to chew on, right? Well, true. Yeah. So what you have to offer is really pretty important. Don't, don't try to be somebody else. It's still okay to give a hallelujah now and then, but you don't have to be somebody else to do it. Well, that's just amazing. Well, maybe I'll go scrounge up some more bones to take around the neighborhood. I think it's a great idea. And maybe a little whistle while I work, but you know what? Maybe other than instead of hallelujah, Maybe I'll try row, row, row your boat. That sounds great. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. After Jesus' death and resurrection, the church started right here in Israel. But it didn't stay there for long. Very soon, it spread. In fact, in just a few years, it covered most of this territory around the Mediterranean Sea, the Roman Empire. Even though some people like Paul were missionaries who traveled and helped spread the gospel, there were many others who worked right there in their local church to help God's kingdom grow. That's who we want to learn about today. Hi everyone! Today we're talking about the gifts God has given us. Last week we talked about how we all had a responsibility to tell others about Christ. And you may be thinking, well, I'm not sure how to do that. So today we're going to talk about that. First, I want to read a verse to you, Ephesians 2.10. And it says, for we are his creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time. So what that means is that God gave us the gifts that we need. And he knew before we were even created what gifts he was going to give us and how we could use them to glorify Him. Now we do that great big singing Christmas tree at Christmas time, and all those talented singers use the gift of song for telling about Jesus' birth, and all the musicians play their instruments, and Pastor Matt gets up front and gives a really beautiful message telling people about Christ's love. And if you're like me, maybe you're thinking, but those really aren't my gifts. Like just sitting here in my kitchen talking to you guys on my camera phone, 
I'm nervous. Like this is, this, this is not easy for me. It is not my gift. But thank goodness it is Pastor Matt's gift. And our other pastors, they're so good at doing it. And what you have to remember is for the singing Christmas tree, we see all those people up front, but there are so many other people who worked hard to help make it happen. There were people who built that tree. They carry those huge pieces of lumber and assemble it every year. I couldn't do that either. And all the um, technician guys do the lights that blink with the music. And there's people who design costumes and people who do printing out the programs. There are so many people at our church who use their gifts to make the singing Christmas tree happen. And no matter what your gift is, if you give it to God, he'll find a way to use it. So we're going to talk today about a woman named Lydia who had a gift that maybe isn't something we would think about for winning people to Christ. Today we're talking about Lydia. You guys, first I have to tell you. When I knew I was talking about Lydia, I thought, oh, I should wear purple. It turns out I have no purple in my closet. I have pink, so please use your imagination that this is purple. I thought, that's okay. I'll print a picture of Lydia in purple and everybody will know. Apparently, my printer was out of purple ink, so she printed off pink too. So you're gonna have to use your imaginations today. I hope God gave you that gift. Um, so this is Lydia. Lydia's talent was she was a seller of purple fabric. Seems kind of strange to us now, but back then, in the Bible times, purple fabric was super important. It was also super duper expensive, so purple was the color of kings and the really rich people, and they used it in the tabernacle. Lydia owned a, I guess you'd call it a business. It was her business to do this, to sell this purple fabric. And I don't know if she actually made the fabric because the Bible tells us that she had a household, which means servants and maybe slaves, and they probably did the actual dyeing process. And I thought, oh, it'd be so cool if I could tell my friends how they made this purple fabric. It was really not what I was expecting. There are these awful little snails, but they're called mollusks. Hold this up for you to see. That is somebody's hand. They're holding some. And if you see this purplish, bluish stuff, that is actually the dye that is on their hands. So if you did this for your job, your hands were probably always stained purple. And if you have ever been walking on the beach and smelled a dead fish, oh my goodness, you guys, the smell of these things supposedly is horrendous. And these are just little snails. They would catch like hundreds of them. And I read a couple different things. One thing said they put them all in a giant like a bucket or a vat and let them rot for days. Another thing said they just boiled them for days. So I don't know which it was, but regardless, the smell was so bad that they actually wrote a law about it. If this was your job, it was horrible. So if this was your job, everybody knew what you did for a living. So back to Lydia. Lydia was really good at this. She was really good at selling this purple fabric and she'd done really well. And that's really unusual in the Bible times because usually women did not own businesses and they did not own homes. So they think maybe she'd been married and her husband died. And then I read somewhere else because of her name, the way she's also named after a city, they wonder if maybe she'd been a slave at the beginning of her life, which would make her success even more impressive. So Lydia was down by the water with some other women when Apostle Paul came along. And God opened her heart when Paul was telling her about Christ and she believed, she accepted God into her heart and she was baptized. Not only that, her whole household was baptized. And remember I said Lydia had a house? Well, it must have been a pretty big house because Lydia said, please come stay with me and you can stay with me as long as you need to while you're doing your missionary work here. Who knows what would have happened on Paul's mission trip if he hadn't met Lydia and if God hadn't used her gift and brought her success so that years down the road she could take care of his missionaries. Isn't it beautiful how God can do that? It's just amazing. So friends, I want you to think about something that you're good at may not be something that anybody else is good at, maybe something that's just special to you, which is awesome. Maybe it's something that lots of people are good at, and if you're getting good at it too, great. Find a way to use that for Jesus. I asked some friends around here how they could use their gifts for Jesus, and they're gonna tell you now. Bye. I'm a good pianist, and I can play piano to glorify God in church.
I'm good at reading and I can use that talent to read the Bible and be a missionary when I grow up. I'm good at praying for my friends and my family. And I'm good at riding bikes and having fun with my friends and, and having my time with my baby brother. I like to sing, I can sing for the church. I like to draw so I could draw for the church. One of my talents is playing the flute. One way I can use this talent for Jesus is playing songs in church. I'm good at telling people about Jesus and biking and building windows. I'm good at creating things of Legos and wood. I can use my gift to help people for God. I'm good at um, fishing and camping and hunting. Okay. And, and how can you use that for God in the church? I can tell more people about Jesus. Okay. Good job. I'm a good helper. So I can see in the church. I'm good at playing trumpet and I could uh, play in church. tuning in to Bible Time News. This is your host, Sandra Smith. It's the question we've all been asking ourselves since the very beginning of this video. How do ordinary people help their local church? We have one of our reporters live on the ground with people that are doing just that. Hello, my name is Nicole and I'm with Biblical Broadcasting Television Services and I'm here with Aquila and Priscilla and I have asked them to tell me just a little bit about how they are supporting their local church. Guys? Hi, I'm Aquila. And I'm Priscilla. And we are tent makers, and we met the Apostle Paul a few weeks ago. So now we are letting him stay in our home, and we are working together with him, making the tents and spreading the gospel of Christ. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aquila and Priscilla. Thank you so much for supporting our local church, and I hope that your tent making business is really great. Catch you guys later on Biblical Television Broadcasting Network Services. Hello, my name is Nicole, and I am here in location for Biblical Television Network, and I am here with Barnabas. Barnabas, can you just tell me just a little Years, and I'm the one who introduced him to the church. That's so awesome. And also, what you been looking for? You gave somebody a second chance. Who was that? John Mark. We had a Paul and I had a disagreement, and personal. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, that is personal. But I'm glad this one did it end well. It did. It did. Yeah. It ended well. Good. I'm glad it ended well. So, how do you support your local church? I train and encourage others to serve Jesus. That's awesome. Thank you for supporting your local church. Thank you, Nicole, for asking the tough questions we've all been wondering the answer to. Thank you for tuning in to Bible Time News. It's been so wonderful to have you with us. Make sure you tune in next time for even more exciting adventures and interesting stories. We are committed to making sure you get the news you want. Have a wonderful evening. Well, we just met some pretty interesting people. People who used their talents, their time, and their treasure to help share with others the good news of God and to serve God in his church. Think about that. Ms. Krista told us about Lydia. 
She took time to host people in her house, to let Paul come and stay with her, and let believers meet at her house for church. She was a busy lady. She owned her own business, but she took time for others. Priscilla and Aquila, they had a talent for making tents, and they used that in ways that would glorify God and help others, sharing in the market and helping Paul, who was, by the way, a tent maker also. We also know that there were Christians who gave money and treasure to help others. The city that Lydia lived in, Philippi, years later after the church there was established, they took an offering and sent money to Jerusalem to help poor people who were struggling there. They wanted to help them. They gave their treasure to help God's church to serve others. We just met Barnabas a few minutes ago, but I'd like to tell you a little bit more about him from God's word. I want you to listen and see if you can find what are ways that Barnabas used his time, his talent, or his treasure to serve God and the church. Acts chapter 4 tells us that the name Barnabas means son of encouragement, someone who encourages. In that same chapter, we're told that the early church had a need. They would bring in money to the church and then help those who were needy. There were a lot of people who were suffering at that time. Barnabas had a property. He sold that property and took the money, brought it to the church so that the poor people, the needy, could have something to help them. We also know in Acts chapter 9 that after Paul was saved, the Christians were still afraid of him. Wouldn't you be? He had gone around killing them and hurting them and putting them in jail. I think I would be afraid too. But Paul, Barnabas realized Paul had truly been changed and had given his heart to Jesus. So Barnabas was the one who took him and introduced him to other church people and said, look, he's really okay. He's given his heart to Jesus and he's been truly changed. That was one of the ways that Barnabas was an encourager. Another time happened when there was a young man who kept making mistakes. He had traveled some with Paul and Barnabas, but he would get scared and turn around to go back home. So they were ready to take another trip. Paul said, we don't want to take John Mark with us. Barnabas decided to stay behind and help John Mark grow because he was an encourager. He helped mentor and disciple him until he grew to be a strong Christian. And years later, Paul invited John Mark to come back and help him in his ministry. Barnabas traveled with Paul, even though he didn't do as much of the talking. He traveled along to help him on several missionary journeys. They traveled a lot of miles together. Barnabas also went around visiting churches and encouraging them. So, did you think of some ways that Barnabas used his time, talent, and treasure? Let's think back. It took time to spend with people who were struggling or who were having problems with their faith, like John Mark or Paul. He took time to spend with them and see that they would grow. He took time to travel with Paul on those missionary journeys. He used his talent of encouraging to see people like John Mark grow and grow strong as Christians. He was an encourager and used that talent to bless other people. And he sold his property and gave the money to his the church. That's treasure that he invested in God's kingdom. Are you ready to hear some more stories from the early church of how people use their time, talent, and treasure to see the church grow? Welcome back to Bible Time News. I'm your host, Sandra Smith. Today on Bible Time News, we're covering the story of two local women who are doing all they can to support their local church. One of our interviewers is live on the ground. Take a look. Hey guys, I'm coming at you live today from Hope Sound, Florida. This is BTV News, and I'm here today with Tabitha. She's going to tell us, Tabitha, what do you do to serve your local church? Well, I have a few favorite hobbies like um crocheting, sewing, knitting, you know, those kind of crafty things. And I like to make blankets, scarves, you know, things to donate to people who really need them. That's awesome. What a great contribution. 
So a little thing about Tabitha here. So I heard that you, like, died, but you're here today. So what's up with that? Well, yeah, it's a great day to be alive. It was a time when I wasn't, but God sent Peter, raised me from the dead, and here I am doing what I love and serving Jesus. Well, there you have it, folks. What a miracle. That's awesome. Thanks for your contribution, Tabitha. Thank you, Barbara. Next up, we have the story of a local businesswoman who sold purple in her town. She was selling purple one day when she heard Paul speaking. It was after she heard Paul speaking that she came to know Jesus as her personal savior. After that, she supported her local church by giving Paul and Silas a place to stay and letting them use her uh, all the property she owned as a place for them to have worship services. It may not seem like Lydia did an awful lot, but that's really not what God is asking us to do. He's not asking us to do big extravagant things. He's just asking us to do what we can. If you do all you can to support your local church, God will honor that and do what you can. You can too be like Lydia and do just the little things and it can make a big difference. Thank you so much for tuning in to Bible Time News this evening. It was wonderful to have you with us. Have a great evening. Oh, hey there. I was just drawing a picture. You want to join me? Grab a piece of paper. We're going to do a real quick project. We're going to try to draw a picture of the church. All right? So if you need to grab a pen or a paper or something to write with, grab it. Be right back real fast. All right. It's your turn. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Can you draw a picture of the church? There it is. What do you think? I asked you to draw a picture of the church, and you may have drawn a picture of a building like this. Actually, this is what it says right there, a church building. But I was a little bit tricky. I asked you to draw a picture of the church. You know the church isn't really a building? Hmm. So, what is it? Well, a building is just walls. Look at this right here. What is missing? You are. Right? A church building without people would just be walls. Right? You are the church. So here is the real picture I drew. That's the church. Remember, who is the church? You are. You are the church. The church is made up of lots of people, big and small, rich and poor, and they all have time, treasure, talents. To give to Jesus. Let's remember that we're the church. And this week, I want you to think about how could you serve God's church? How can you help God's worldwide kingdom grow? By using your time, treasure, or talent. <laughs>
This room's still empty. We still miss you guys. But can I tell you something? A thought that hit me the other day. You might not realize this, but it's so incredible. Good things do come out of things like this. You know what's happening? Last week you got to see the Gulfs in Africa. Did you know that even though we're not here in our own seats, because we're not here, every week we have people over in Africa, we have people all over the United States, we have kids all over joining us now. We have visitors every week. Is that not cool? So, Galtz, I know I'm not going to hear you, but wherever you're at, if you're in Africa, if you're in the United States, it doesn't matter. Go ahead, raise your voices. Good morning! Now, some of you parents may have been watching this week after week. It is a whole lot more fun when the kids are here because, man, can they get noisy. But we're dealing with what we have. Kids, Mr. Dan has told you this once. He's told you this twice. He's told you three times. And he's going to keep telling you this over and over again. God created you special. The Bible tells us that when you were still in your mother, before you were even born, he was putting all this good, wonderful things in your life. And he was writing out a story for your life. Mr. Dan has all sorts of incredible things that God has put in my life. And it's uniquely for me. There's nobody out there like me. My story is my story. God made it for me. Mr. John has all sorts of incredible things inside him that God put in him. His story is only his. And your story is only yours. God gave you certain things. He pieced together your personality, your talents, your, all your gifts. He pieced them all together to form you just to be you. And that is an amazing. Not only are we all special, but we are all equally special in God's sight. Mr. Dan's not any more special to God than Mr. John. Mr. John's not any more special than we've already mentioned the Gulfs or any of you watching. We're all equal. We are all so incredibly special in God's sight. He loves us so much, but we're human. We tend to use these up here to try to look at people and decide where they should go on the levels. While we're all equal, we try to say, hmm, this person right here makes a lot of money. They got their stuff together. They've got a big house, a nice boat. Oh yeah, they're on the top. And, ooh, this guy right here, he's a doctor, she's a nurse. Man, they make a lot of money. They save lives. Certainly. I mean, they're important. They go on the top. And we begin to put all these people up top, up on a pedestal. We look up to them. Maybe in the church world, it's the pastor. We say, oh, he's just so amazing. He does so much. And all of us little people, we couldn't be like them. Maybe it's celebrities or sports figures. <laughs> Any number of people that we look up to and say, oh, I just wish I could be like them, but I'll never be like them. I can't sing like them. I can't play sports like them. I just can't do what they do. But as I said, God made us all special. And you know what? If we move any block off this tower, that tower is not what it used to be. It's not what it's supposed to be anymore because it's missing a block. So if you take the pastor out... It doesn't look right, does it? If you take the nurses and the doctor off, we just messed it up because we're all important. But you know what? Sometimes those ones at the very bottom, those ones we kind of ignore that everybody looks at and says, oh, no, I, I don't want to do that. Oftentimes, these are the people that you'll never find their name listed anywhere. You won't find them up on a stage in a spotlight. They're doing the quiet work. What's it look like? Well, maybe this person down here cleans the church. Let me ask you, how far would the pastor get if nobody ever cleaned that church? 
Who's going to want to come to a church that's a dirty mess? Somebody's got to do it. Not everybody wants to, but somebody does that. That's their piece of the puzzle, and it's just as important as the one on top. Same thing in a hospital. If you don't have the person in the bottom cleaning a hospital, the doctor's not going to get very far. Doctors can't do their job in a hospital without it being clean. You just make people even more sick. You need these people down here. Sometimes it's the trash people that pick up your garbage. Where would we be if our garbage just kept piling and piling? We hear a lot these days, maybe you've heard your parents talk about essential people and non-essential. Guess what? From here down to here, everybody is essential. But you know what? While this changes, when we take these off the top, while it changes the blocks, oftentimes these down here, these people that we don't pay attention to, while the pastor's preaching, we have old people that are constantly daily praying for our church, praying for people, knocking on doors saying, how are you? Guess what? When you start taking those people out, not only are we changing things, all of a sudden, the tower's not quite as sturdy as it used to be because we need that foundation. You take out the cleaner, the person cleaning the church, and we're getting wobbly. Maybe it's a cafeteria worker who is cooking meals and everybody says, oh, what's that? But you take it out and people aren't getting fed and the more you take off the bottom, we're getting unstable because those people, even though they're not recognized, they hold the tower up most of the time. While doctors, pastors, all of them are so very important, they couldn't do their job without the people on the bottom. What are we saying? We're saying you all have talents. You all are special. And God doesn't ask you to be a hero. He's not looking for somebody that'll stand in the spotlight. No, all he wants of you is to find all those wonderful things he put in your life. Figure out what you're good at. Maybe it's just you're that person that when somebody's having a hard day, they're at the end of it. Oh, they just can't go on. You're that person that sits down and says, talk to me. That's important. That holds people up. Maybe you're that person that's just always smiling, always can see the good in people. Maybe you organize things, put things together so wonderfully. All God asks is whatever he gives you, you figure that out. What makes you tick? What makes you happy? What you can do the best? And you give it back to him and you use it for his church. I know I'm talking to kids and it's easy for kids to say, well, we're not big like the big people. We don't have jobs. We don't have all these things. So what can we do? Let me remind you. Jesus used the little boy's lunch to feed over 5,000. We talk about big old David. Ah, ah. David was a little boy with five little stones in a sling when he took out that giant. What did he do? He took something that God gave him that he learned to use well, and he said, God, here you go. Over and over again, God used little kids. You remember the story of a general that got leprosy? It was a little slave girl who was faithful that got him cured. I could take you through over and over and over again. God loves working through children. He loves working through young adults. He loves working through all of us. And all he asks is not that you give him some huge thing. You don't have to have the most wonderful voice. You don't have to stand in front of crowds and impress them. All you have to do is whatever he gives you, give it to him. Use it for him. It may feel like you're down on the bottom, but that's all right. Because God uses those people to hold all these others up. Is God using you to hold others around you up? Whatever you have deep inside, all that special God's given you, all that special Mr. Dan keeps reminding you you have, find it and give it back to God and he'll help you share that with the world. And you may never have your name up in lights, but one day when you get to see Jesus face to face, it's not going to be, oh, you impressed all these. No, he's going to say, well done, you were faithful. In other words, 
well done. You took what I gave you and you used it. This week, the weeks to come, take what you have, whether you feel like you're on the top or whether you feel like you're on the bottom, use it for God's glory. Share it with all those around you. Today, we're not traveling around the world to hear from a missionary. We're going to hear from people who serve their local church right here in Hope Sound, Florida. Hi, my name is Bethany McCarty, and the way I support my local church is I clean the church. My uh, uh, emphasis to young people and my concern for young people is prayer. I have definitely felt led of the Lord to... Uh, to keep the five o'clock prayer meeting going every morning. And, I, and my emphasis a lot is on our young people because it's the greatest life they can ever live is through consistency and a faithful prayer life and a, and a consistent walk with Jesus. Hi, I'm Evan Jackson, and I serve at the local church by running cameras for the live stream. Hi, my name is Bev Waits. I attend Hope Sound Bible Church. I'm happy to serve as an assistant in the children's ministries on Sunday mornings, sitting with the children, and I love them dearly. We know that the church is not about a building. It's the people of the church who serve. That's the real church. So who do you think serves in our church? I want you to think about some people who help the church go forward People who are not up front, but may be hidden. Take a minute, think about it, and share with someone near you. Next time you see that person, thank them. So guys, you needed to tell me something? Uh, yeah, so we uh, kind of wrecked your cart a little bit. Well, I Sorry about saw that. that. And on the way in, I checked it. The golf cart's really okay. It wasn't damaged, but next time, why don't you ask me to take a ride? You know, we're talking about our talents this week and using our talents. I really don't think being a driver is your talent. Your talents are making kids happy and sharing the good news and helping us learn our verses and things like that. So don't try to be somebody else. Just use your talents the next time. Well, I'm really sorry about it. Will you forgive us? Well, sure, of course, I'll forgive you. 
let's just make good choices from here on out. And I'll tell you what, why don't we go have an adventure together? Yeah, yeah, that sounds oh, awesome. Oh, I love adventures. Awesome. Let's yeah, can adventure. I come along? That sounds like fun. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to ride around campus, and whenever we see someone or something that reminds us of people who serve in our church, we're going to stop and say our memory verse for the day. Here it is. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2.10 Hey, those are people who pray for our church. That's serving. Well, we are his workmanship. Hey, look at the buses. Those people have the talent of driving a bus. They serve by helping kids get to church. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2.10 Uh, well, I think that lady has a talent for decorating. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, 10. The people who work here help do paint maintenance on our campus. They fix pipes and air conditioners and other things like that. That's a way of serving others. But we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The lady who lives here is a nurse. She helps sick people and tells them about Jesus. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, 10. Um, a lot of people work in these offices, and, uh, they help missionaries all around the world by taking care of money and sending out newsletters and doing things at home to help them do the job that they can do in other countries. There's a lot of teachers who work there. They use their talents to serve. You can get a lot of yummy food there at the cafeteria. Those people have a talent for making food. Oh, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, 10. Hey, I just thought of the people who help run the sound the church. They're using their talents to bless others. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, 10. Wow, I learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed learning. Practice your verse this week. Buckle your seatbelts. We're headed back to India to hear more about Amy Carmichael. Have you ever been embarrassed about something? We're going to hear about a time when Amy Carmichael was embarrassed and what she learned from it. One windy, damp day in Ireland, when Amy Carmichael was a young girl, she and her family were walking down the main street on their way home from church. As they walked, they saw an old woman in rags struggling with a heavy bundle. Everyone was ignoring the old woman because she was dirty and poor, but Amy turned and ran to the woman. She helped the woman to carry her heavy load down the street. All the well-dressed people who knew Amy were staring at her. Some even pointed and laughed as they passed by because Amy was getting dirty and helping someone who wasn't like her. Amy's face turned red and hot. She was embarrassed. Why would they laugh when she was showing kindness to someone in need? Amy was getting wet in the drizzling rain. She felt miserable. She meant to help, but now she was being laughed at. Didn't these people understand that she was doing the right thing? 
Then Amy remembered something the Bible teaches, that things that are eternal, that last forever, are important. God sees the things we do and what he thinks is more important than what other people think. If you follow Jesus, not everyone is going to understand what you do. Amy thought, I want to do something for Jesus that will last forever, even if people don't understand. As she was helping the old woman, Amy learned another important lesson. Eternal things are important. What other people say or think about what you do is not as important as doing what God wants you to do. Amy wanted to do things for God that would last forever. Many years later, when Amy was in India, she still wanted to do things that would last. Each day, she gathered people together and taught them from God's word. She told them about God the Father, who loves us with a love that never ends. Amy had many jobs to do as a missionary, someone who does the job of telling others about Jesus. And the people of India watched her very closely. As they watched and learned from Amy, they began to understand more and more about trusting in the one true God. Each night, as Amy returned, hot and tired, to her small home, a happy Prina would be there to greet her. Every day, Amy continued trying to discover where the temple children came from. Amy would dress like the Indian people and wander among the crowds telling them about Jesus. While she did this, she would also listen for clues about the temple children. Years went by, but her questions were still not answered. More and more, Amy was sure that God meant for her to rescue the children. She knew it would be dangerous, but she wanted to do what was right. Then, slowly, she started to get clues about where these children came from. One day, she disguised herself and stayed at a home for travelers. Everyone sat together on the floor in the evenings and talked. Someone who worked at the temple was there. Amy listened carefully. She learned that if a mother died, the father would sometimes sell his young daughter to the temple so that he would not have to take care of her. Another time, Amy and a missionary friend slept in an empty cow shed attached to a mud house. Through the walls, Amy heard a family arguing. She learned that a poor family who badly needed money for food would sometimes sell a baby to the temple. Day after day, she learned more. A mother might sell her baby to make the gods happy. Parents might promise to give a sick child to the gods if the gods healed the child. Often, it was the oldest girl in the family who was given to the temple. Amy told other Christians, people who have trusted Jesus as their savior, about the terrible things going on in the temples. Some of them did not understand her desire to help these children. They also didn't think she should spend time working with children when there was other missionary work for her to do. They didn't think that telling children about God's love and what he had done for them was important. But Jesus came into this world to save people, including children. God wants all people, children and adults, to know and love him. People are important to God, no matter their age. Amy was sure God wanted her to help these children. You will not be a real missionary any longer. You will be spending all of your time raising babies, Amy's friend said to her. But Amy was determined to keep searching for ways to help. No matter if people understand or not, she thought, I'll do what God has told me to do. She knew the things that are eternal and last forever are important. Children continued to come to live and study with Amy, but none of them were the temple children she was trying to find. Then, one day, the second temple child arrived. Amy heard of a father who was about to sell his daughter to the temple. He would give her to Amy for 100 rupees. That's Indian money worth about $600 today. But is it right to pay money for a child, Amy wondered. She prayed about it and felt that God was guiding her to pay the money. 
without telling anyone. Amy prayed that God would repay her the 100 rupees to show he approved of what she had done. Such a large gift would be rare. How would God answer her prayer? Ten days after the little girl came to stay with Amy, a missionary who knew nothing about Amy's prayer sent a check for 100 rupees. All of the girls gathered together with Amy to praise God for his wonderful answer to prayer. Later, Amy rescued a tiny baby as it was being taken to the temple. Before long, Amy had 16 children. She knew she must find a larger home for them. She looked for a place that would be safe, away from the city. Amy purchased a house at the end of a row of tamarind trees in South India, in a village called Donover. It was a quiet place between the mountains and the sea. The land looked dry and deserted, but underground were streams, which would later provide wells of clean drinking water. Amy and her children worked hard to make this new place their home. More children began to hear of the new house at Donover as a safe place, but not all of these children were running from the temples. One of these girls was 16 years old. Her name was Jewel of Victory. Jewel lived with her family in a nearby village. Many times she had offered sacrifices to the false gods of India. Jewel was afraid of the gods she believed in. She knew she did many wrong things, and she wanted to be forgiven of all of her sin. She had prayed to the false gods, but they could not help her. One day, Jewel was given a Bible. As she read it, she learned of the living God who loved her. She read how God loved her even though she had sinned. Jewel realized her need for a savior. She believed God's word and trusted that Jesus was the only one who could save her from her sin. But she was afraid to tell her family and friends about her decision. She knew her family would be very angry that she had decided to follow Jesus. They might hurt her to try to make her change her mind. She pretended to keep worshiping the idols, hoping that no one would discover her secret. But she began to see that it was not right to take part in idol worship. Jewel read her Bible that it was wrong to worship gods. I cannot pretend I believe the idols any longer, Jewel thought. Please, God, show me what to do. Very early one morning, God reminded her of Donover. She had heard about Amy's house and thought she might be safe there. While her family was sleeping, she quietly left. Crossing the river, Jewel came to Amy's house, cried for help, and was taken in. As soon as Jewel's family discovered she was gone, they rushed to Amy's house and surrounded it. They wanted to take Jewel back and force her to follow their ways. Would Jewel have to go back with her family? Will she be able to stay with Amy, or will her family force her to leave? Will she want to stay with Amy, even if that means that she has to give up her home? and her family. Make sure to come back next week to find out what happens. Thanks so much for, jo for joining us today, boys and girls. I hope that you learned a lot about serving your local church. And this week, try to go out and at least do one thing to help somebody from your church. That could be picking leaves out of their yard. That could be just giving them a card or coloring them a picture. But just try to find one way to help someone from your church. And this morning, I'm going to pray with you. Um, in closing, and I just want to just um, remind you again how, of how special you are. God created you in his image, and he loves you. And no matter what your skin color is, or no matter what the color of your hair is, or if you have freckles, or if you're tall or short, God loves you very much, and he has a purpose for your life. Okay, so let's talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the boys and girls who joined us today, Lord. Thank you for their lives, God, and thank you um, for how you can use them um, to help bless others, God. So I just ask that this week you help the boys and girls to go out and to show your love to others by, um, by helping them and by um, giving of themselves. Thank you so much for all the boys and girls, and we just praise your name. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Did you find all seven suitcases? Let's put into practice what we learned this week with some challenges. And be sure to watch all the way to the end for a special message. Have a great week.